So hey there everyone, today we're taking a quick look at uh, a couple of photos that I shot recently with the Mavic 2 Pro. We're going to take the photos and make a panorama out of them, and then we're going to try out uh, Luminar 2018. So I've been experimenting with that for quite a while, I've had Luminar for a bit, and i um, getting more comfortable with it, and I'm anticipating the new Luminar 2019 with the Digital Asset Management. So that should be really interesting because it's going to be Lightroom-like management. And right now I'm in Lightroom in order to uh, in order to do this video for you. But pretty soon I might be in Luminar and managing my photos in Luminar. We'll we'll see when that comes out. So I actually shot just uh, not too long ago. Let me see, September 24th. So coming up on a month ago, I shot this image and this image. So these two together. You'll notice that I also bracketed them. So we've got five images and five images on each of these. And the reason I did that was for making an HDR pano. Well, recently with the new Lightroom, we can create merged HDR panos now. I had already put these two together before. So this one and this one, I put them together and edited them in Luminar previously, but I wanted to show you. When I put these together as just a piano, here is the final version of the image. So I can take this and throw it into Luminar really quick. But what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to open that one. So let's see, 1 of 5, 2 of 5, 3 of 5, 4 of 5, 5 of 5. And then I'm going to open this one too because now we have this new tool from Adobe and Lightroom where we can photo merge and HDR panorama. So I picked all 10 images and let's see how this does. I'm just curious about it. So we're going to be making this HDR panorama natively within Lightroom. So let's let's see what we get. So it's taken a moment and yeah there's 10 images here and they're not small images. They're all raw files right out of the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. So it's going to take us a moment to see a result. So I'm very curious. I'm a little excited to see this result. And the latest Lightroom updates were kind of underwhelming to me. So yeah, this definitely, this looks a little more HDR-y. It's, uh, it's not a huge HDR. I'm gonna go ahead and merge and see what we get. So our final image should be coming out here. By the way, up here in the left-hand corner, Lightroom, if you're not very familiar with it, this is where it tells me what it's doing. So it's creating that panorama. And I made sure that I left the stacking turned off because I didn't want it stacked with either of these image sets of five stacks or five images per stack. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're just being patient people here. And this is actually my first HDR pano merge for the new version of Lightroom. So let's see where that pops up. Where, where does that pop up? Okay, here it is down here. So let's take a look. HDR pano. And I had actually made an HDR pano previously, actually just a plain pano. So here's my plain pano from weeks ago. And here's the pano with the HDR merge. So a little bit of difference here. I'm going to select both of these. And we're going to go ahead and do a comparison between them. So I can definitely see the differences here. On the left-hand side, there is no HDR part to it. On the right-hand side, there is an HDR part. So we definitely warmed up the tones of the rocks. It blewed up the sky a good deal as well. And the green slime that's on the lake is uh, a little slimier. And uh, yeah, so we've got some deeper blue skies. The clouds are looking pretty interesting. So. This isn't terrible, and I'm not against it. It looks all right to me. I just wanted to check this out since we just got the new version of Lightroom um, for all of us, and I'm actually going to go back and close these stacks just to bring them down. So there's the original pano I made the other week, and there is the HDR pano from Adobe's Lightroom. So not bad. You know, I'd, I'd share this. But since we're here, I really wanted to do a little fun stuff in Luminar with you. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do 
is I want to edit in Luminar 2018. So I right click there and we're going to edit a copy with those Adobe Lightroom adjustments because Adobe did seam these two images together for me. So I want to carry that over. So now I'm getting a preparing file for editing up in the left hand corner and Luminar should be popping up. And there we go. Here, here we go. Here's Luminar. So we've got an aerial setting. So Luminar, like Aurora HDR, comes with a bunch of presets. So we've got categories for presets, basic, street, outdoors, portrait, travel. We've got a bunch of presets and those presets will allow us to create different looks that, with our images that other people have created. One of the ones that caught my attention that I thought was interesting was Arial. So the Arial setup is for drone flight, right? Well, it's not necessarily for drone flight. You could apply it to anything. So if you haven't seen Luminar before, let's talk about it for just a moment. So this looks an awful like Lightroom to me, to be honest. Uh, with the first time I opened Aurora HDR and I opened uh, Luminar, I said, wow, you know, this looks very similar to Lightroom. We've got our film strip down on the bottom of our categories. On the right hand side, we've got our filters, all of the tools that we can use to edit this image. So that's that's pretty slick. And I can, let's go up on the top here. So we've got our normal things like file and our edit, and we can rotate our image. We can do new adjustment layers, kind of like Photoshop. We can take a look at our filters, which are over on the right hand side. We've got some tools, free transform, clone stamp, erase, crop, and um, we've also got the crop tools on top as well. Our masks, we haven't put any masks in yet. Then we've got our view and just our windows and our Skylum account to make sure that we are registered and then our help and user's guide. Then we have our zoom level. We could zoom in or out we can look at what's been changed. And right now, nothing's been changed. I just sent this over to Luminar, so nothing's changed yet. We can go back, so undo, and here's our history dropdown. So as we do things, we can go back in history and undo them. And we can crop, free transform, clone stamp, or erase things. Right here, we can turn our film strip off, turn our film strip on. We can turn our filters on and off. And when we're done, we can apply. Now, below this, we've got our standard histogram. And then we've got our filters that we can work with. So, And we've got different workspaces, professional, quick and awesome. So there's a lot of different tools in here where you can make your own workspace as well. I'm going to stick with professional. And then here are all of our filters. So we can go through the filters and we can learn as we go. One of the things that's interesting I'm going to make this super, super warm. It's terrible. But I just wanted to point out to you, check out that develop is now highlighted in yellow. So the text develop is yellow. And it's yellow because I did something in that particular filter. And what I did was I changed the temperature. So you can start looking at these presets that are provided to you by Luminar, by Skylum. And you can learn from the presets. You can learn how someone put their own preset together and when you learn from that then you can start creating your own presets so we've got all of these filters a lot of filters here and we can even play with more filters if we want to as well what i'm going to do so see we've got add filters here so here are all of the filters that we have and they actually give you some explanation for each one which is very nice so that is very helpful to me and makes me kind of happy. They're giving me some extra information. They're giving me some hints. I'm going to close that filters catalog. All right, so I've got presets open here. I haven't done anything yet, but let's try that Arial Awesomer. Whoa, that's definitely a little cooked too. It kind of feels reminiscent of that HDR Pano merge that I did just a few minutes ago in Lightroom. And one of the other interesting things is you can, in the preset, tone it down. So if we only want that to affect things 50%, or we can dial ourselves all the way back. So very interesting here. We can actually be selective about how much pop we give it. And actually, I'm going to go back up to my history. 
and I'm going to put it back to the original. Now, by the way, I'm going to hit that Arial Awesomer again, and let's look on the right-hand side here. So, it actually shows me exactly the filters used, and only the filters used, to make this Arial Awesomer. A little overcooked for my tastes. So first, the Accent AI filter is up to 68%. What does it do? I don't know. Let's play with it. Sliding it back. Okay, so look what it's doing. It's just really richening up the sky, and also the water's getting hit, and the rock formations are getting hit as well. So some pretty hefty changes there. And I'm going to drag that all the way back down. So now the accent filter hasn't been used. By the way, when you're using these filters, you can turn them on and off with that happy little eyeball tool. So I just turned off the accent filter. Now I'm going to turn off saturation and vibrance. And now I'm turning off the color contrast. And look at that, we're back to our original image. Now for my tastes, this one looked a little overcooked. Yeah, actually a fair bit overcooked. I'm going to go to my history. I'm going all the way back to the original again. And I'm going to hit that Arial Awesomer again. So it looks to me that accent filter really kind of slammed, punched up the colors. Maybe I'll boost it to 25. Let's go look at that saturation and vibrance. Now, saturation is always pretty brutal. It, you know, if you want to enhance your colors, saturation is a way to do it. But it's pretty damn brutal. So I'm going to turn that saturation off. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to completely turn that saturation and vibrance off. And then we've got this advanced color contrast. Well, advanced contrast, I'm sorry about that. So the change made here was in the midtones, and they bumped it up by 45. So that, that really kind of hits it. And let's go look at our final filter. Alright, so I tur basically turned off the saturation and vibrance and the advanced contrast because they were a little too brutal for my liking. Now, let's put that accent AI filter, let's put it up to 65. And let's go take a look at the before and after. So I do like how it's affected my skies a little more. And we're not oversaturating the rock formation. So this is a pretty realistic, at the time of day, this is pretty realistic. So here's our before, here's our after. I'm liking that. So I'm just going with the Accent AI filter. At this point, down on the right-hand side, I could save a filter's preset for myself, making my own preset. Awesome. I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I want to play with this some more. So I am going to turn that before and after. So overall, I'm satisfied with my starting point now. And I want to have a little fun. The sun was over here on the right-hand side before, and it was beaming in, as a matter of fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer, a new adjustment layer. All right. And in that adjustment layer, I can add a filter. So I am going to add a sun rays filter. So there I go. And whoa, look, the sun's way over here. That's freaking me out, man. The sun really wasn't there before. How do they do that? And I'm going to click on place the sun center. And I'm going to move the sun over to where it was. It was over here somewhere. And now we've got these sunbeams coming across and we can change the sun rays so I can make even more rays and we can just annihilate half of the image. Let's not do that. I'm going to dial that back a bit and we'll have some sunbeams coming through here and then we can change the look. So as with Photoshop and Lightroom, you can Test things out by playing with the sliders. Don't be afraid to play with the sliders. Please don't. Um, you, you can actually play around with these things, test them out, see, see what they do. Because you can always reset. You can always go back up to your history and reset to the beginning. You can always remove this adjustment layer or turn it off. Hey, look at that. I turned it off. And now I turned it back on, and there's that cool sunbeam. Back here on the right-hand side, by the way, I'm done placing the sun center, so I'm going to turn that off. We could warm it up, too. Look at that. Now we got this super warm or super cool. What do we really want to do with this? Maybe I'll warm it 
up to 50 here. Then we can also change the sun's radius. Ooh, that's a big sun. That's a little teeny sun. So very cool. We'll set it back to where it was before, which was 40, I think. And glow radius, you can kind of take that down. So how much glow do we want there? That's too much. Maybe we'll put the glow radius right about to 32. Glow amounts at 60. Let's see what that does. Okay. So we can really pop that sun. That's very interesting to me. So maybe we, we pop that a little. And now what happens if I go back to that warmth just a little bit more? It's only affecting where the sun is. And then penetration. Let's see what's going on there. It's at 40 right now. Okay, it's making more beams, it's making less beams. How far across are they getting? I get it. So we can have those beams all the way across right to here. So I'll push that penetration up just a little bit more. And I'm gonna call this okay. So now we've got the sun showing up in our drone photo. Pretty cool. Is this super realistic? Is this a little unrealistic? This is up to you. This is all about your tastes. But it's definitely something different than where you originally started. I'm going to go ahead and there, I just hit the little eye tool up on the top bar. So now we can see the difference of what we've done. And actually, I'm kind of digging it. It's unrealistic, but I did a very similar one recently, showed it to a couple of friends and asked them, show me what's fake. Nobody picked out the sunbeams at all. Um, so, you know, people like compelling images and this might add to your photography. It might take away from it. You might think that this is overdone and I understand that. So it's, uh, it's very easy to undo that and not go overdone. Go back to original, you're all set. Or you can step back or you could delete this layer adjustment that I made. So once we're done with this, once we're all set, up in the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the apply button. Now, the one sad thing with this, you can save photos in Luminar as Luminar photos so that you can go back and edit them again later. Now, that is kind of a problem because we can't do that from Lightroom to Luminar. So once you've finished it and imported your image back into Lightroom, you're stuck with it. Since I can't save in the Luminar file format, I've got to be really certain that I'm satisfied with the adjustments that I made. The one thing I could do is, the next time I use Luminar, is make my own presets again. Now, the other thing I noticed was that this was kind of cropped off on us while we were looking in Luminar. I didn't set it to fit, so that's my bad. I did that. That's my fault. And because I would really like to move the sun over to the right a little more now because I didn't realize that it wasn't cropped off. So my bad, I, uh, I wasn't paying close enough attention as I was talking to you. So I do apologize for that. So I could redo this one again. I'm gonna have to go through all the steps and I'm gonna have to add the sun in again and play around with the sun. But I do like these light beams and realistic, not realistic, it doesn't matter. I'm doing this for fun and having fun. And like so many of you who are uh, drone pilots, if you're not a commercial pilot, you're probably flying to have fun and to make some interesting images and to make some interesting videos. So I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial, uh, a quick walkthrough on um, you know, taking a uh, couple of images from my DJI Mavic 2 Pro and turning them into a pano and then throwing them into Luminar and playing with some of Luminar's filters to uh, make it an even more interesting pano. Is it better? Is it worse? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna pick at it. By the way, so this is an edit, and I just wanna go look at the original one that I did not too long ago, and I'm gonna highlight the two of these. We're gonna throw it into the compare view, and I'm gonna hit the tab key just to uh, open it up. So left-hand side is basically a panoramic, that was stitched together by Lightroom. It was two images. Um, no edits happened other than the fact that they were merged together as a pano. So I'm pretty satisfied with the colors coming out of my Mavic 2 Pro. Pretty darn impressive. On the right hand side, we've got the pano that we then edited with Skylum's Luminar. And you know we played around a little bit with the colors and we added the sun. 
uh, which is pretty cool adding the sun somewhere that's that's kind of neat so which one of these is right which one of these is wrong there's there's really no such thing it's it's to your tastes it's what you're interested in relaying um, in the scenes that you're creating with your drone so good answer bad answer um, there is no good answer and bad answer frankly I like the original piano uh, straight out of my Mavic 2 it did a very nice job and I could fine-tune it in Lightroom as well and get some pretty similar results or I could fine-tune it with Luminar or other tools now remember where did that one go on me there we go so there is our piano edit and I also did another piano edit previously that's the HDR piano merge that we did when we started this so I would like to take a look at the two of these really quick once again and I am just going to open this up so on the left hand side this is the new HDR piano merge from Lightroom and Adobe on the right hand side is our new Luminar edit not a huge difference some difference in the rock colors a little difference in the sky colors and the fact that we've also got our fake sun over here which is neat all right all right everyone i hope you enjoyed that one and we will catch you next time when i'm doing some more photo edits and um hdrs and drone flight we'll be popping more of this up so we're going to talk more about travel photography editing and photography here on this channel because these are the things i enjoy so rather than talking airstream all the time i i really wanted to uh start doing more of the stuff that i consider fun and sharing it with you so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you had fun and like i said is the photo right is the photo wrong doesn't really matter it's to your tastes and you should have fun with your photography all right i know we all want to sell it and make a million bucks but enjoy it too